Okay, so we got four things on the docket today. Uh, we got the top, then we're going to look at figures, then uh, my introduction to casting, which was tragic, and then OPs or observation posts. So with the glamorous part of diorama building out of the way, you know, cutting that foam, um, I just, I glued it to the top and then I did a little plaster work to kind of even out the two pieces so I had an even uh, kind of surface. And then I just started working on my dirt work. I typically do multiple layers of the grout. Um, you know, I'll lay it down once and then kind of get that all wet and get it set. And then while it's still wet and, and, and I'm done my overcoat and, and I'm hoping you've seen my other videos, then I lay on more because if I leave it too wet, it'll kind of smooth out. But if I have kind of a dry coat over the top and let that partially harden, then I get all these great shadows that I can later on go back in with washes and, and different paints and, and get these modulations throughout the entire surface. Figures are super intimidating to me. You know, painting them, I mean, heck, mine, they've got googly eyes, you can see that, you know, they're big, huge irises and all that kind of stuff. But the fact is, they really add to your diorama. And so, I guess my point is, if you're afraid of it, don't be. Put them in there, because the story that they tell in the poses and the situations you put them in, that's bringing emotion into it. And that's really what I tried to do in mine. You know, this guy's very pensive. They're going on a, a mission they may not come back from, so he's spending a little time with his buddies, uh, you know, early in the morning before the sun's up. The tank I chose for this diorama had a 70 gallon fuel tank. So they had to fill this thing with like a bunch of cans. They didn't have like fuel trucks, so I needed a whole bunch of cans. So I went down this path of uh, doing resin casting and had a whole journey. I bought all the stuff for, you know, doing silicone casting and created these molds and, and then poured a bunch of them, even created this really cool resin curing oven, and then find out, you know, these things weren't even available till 1940, so I had the wrong can. So I found the right ones from Mini Art, that's what these are, and I put the cans that I made in the storage area, so it was actually kind of cool. In my depiction, the tank will go over this bridge and, you know, then they'll do their mission that they're getting briefed on down in the bunker. So on top is the OP, and we've got a machine gun emplacement in the corner with a Lewis gun. You know, it's kind of, I tried to do some peppering so it looks like he's gotten shot at a bunch. Then there's a guy to his, to his left right there. But then there's also a guy to his right, and these guys are just kind of protecting his flank. I did what I could to try to make these guys look anxious. It's a tight position, they can't stand up. They're 15 feet apart covering the flanks, they can't see each other. They're basically alone. The guy on the Lewis gun, you know, he's in a little tiny bunker looking in one direction. He can't really communicate with the other guys. It's a lonely, scary morning, you know, before an unknown mission. 